So, so well anymore, but um, there were days when I did actually nothing else. But um, let's go back. Um, I studied computer science at the University of Helsinki, and uh, during my studies I actually went and um, it was in the beginning of 2000-2001 I went and joined a small IT company and um, that's where I actually really learned to code. Clearly, in university, you get the background, you get the basics, you get the, you know, you know get the theory. But uh, as everyone or anyone who's been exposed to the challenge really knows, is is that you only you, you only learn by doing, and I, I, I really um, think that's the way it is. Now, um, in 2003, I was recruited into Nordea, which is. Um, which is um, the largest Nordic bank, and uh, I, I uh, initially I went to um, to um, data security for the bank, and I did my master's thesis over there, and I had already started my studies in economics as well, and after a few months uh, I was proposed to move on to the markets department and start working on derivatives, and. I went, I was happy, um, moved on, moved to Copenhagen and uh, well, that's when my nine years in investment banking started. Um, after Copenhagen, I was a short while in Finland and then I moved to London and actually I lived only 50 meters away from where we are just now. <laughs> so it's lovely to be here. Um, so I worked with RBS a few years, and uh, well, I must say, um, I know a bit about coding, but I also know a bit about socializing risks, and I'm not a huge fan of that. So yeah, what has happened in the economic crisis has really been about, you know, taking the risks of banks' balance sheets and moving those to taxpayers. But that's actually not what I'm here to talk about today. Well, um, nowadays, um, actually, when I moved back to Finland a few years ago from here, um, I started investing in local startups, and now I'm um, invested in five Finnish startups, and uh, I think it gives me a very nice uh, balance between the political, the, the poli well, policy work and political activities, which you might call a bit dull sometimes. But anyway, so I actually wanted to start with by saying that life is so much more about finding the problem than finding a solution. And I'm pretty sure that anyone in this room who's ever done any piece of or any bit of coding does agree. Because if, if you're given a task, then clearly if you know basically any programming language, then you can easily, perhaps not so easily, but at least after some effort, after some time, you are able to solve the problem. But if you want to write an elegant piece of code, then I think there's no other solution for you than to actually define the task yourself. And if we take this actually a little bit towards regulation and the field of politics. Now, take regulation. Um, I heard that you've had a quite nice evening yesterday and perhaps with some beer and wine and all that. And since we are talking about the Nordics here, then there's no, no way around uh, that talking about a little bit for alcohol the consumption of alcohol and the regulation around it. Um, what is actually the problem? To politicians in Finland and uh, 
well, I'm polite enough not to speak about other countries that I've lived in, or the other Nordic countries that I've lived a few years in, in Denmark and uh, spent some time in Sweden as well, but let me just stick to Finland anyway. So, um, politicians in Finland quite long ago figured out that alcohol in the country is a problem. And indeed it is, because 10% um, of the population drink half of the alcohol consumed in the country. So that's, that's, quite, a, that's, that's um, quite a statistic. And for several decades, alcohol has been regula regulated quite massively. Well, first of all, we have a state monopoly, so you can't just you know, go to your local store or the local off license and buy your beer or, or, or your bottle of wine whenever you fancy, but you actually need to more or less plan it ahead because the opening times are um, not that convenient because on a Sunday you can't buy a proper or liquor or wine at all and, uh, and after or in the evening it, it's not possible either. Beer you can buy at a local supermarket but but, then, but, but only before 9 o'clock in the evening, and not before 9 a.m. in the morning, obviously. Now, that's one thing, and uh, clearly alcohol has been taxed quite massively as well, and that applies to basically any Nordic country. Now, since joining the EU, um, raising taxes has still been tried, but increasingly it doesn't help so much anymore because um, we have this um, quite liberal neighbour, the southern side of, of Finland, Estonia, where, which, which seems these days to be the most popular tourist, <laughs> touristic destinations to quite many Finns because they, they tax alcohol much less. So according to some statistics, actually 50% of the alcohol which is consumed in the country um, is imported by individuals either from Estonia or somewhere else where taxation is less harsh than in Finland. Now, have politicians solved the problem? I really don't think they have. Um, in the past 15 years, Finnish uh, young people have actually been drinking constantly less. So I would think with the, you know, the overall liberalization and, and the globalization that people move around and you know, we, we uh, get to know each other and different cultures, I think the sort of the, the trauma, the trauma that we perhaps had for 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 some time or some take, some decades is is slowly starting to uh, erode. But what do politicians do? Well, we have elections coming up in a couple of months, and uh, there's new legislation on the table which which plans to make the regulation even stricter. And here I would say. This really is not a solution and we are trying to solve the wrong problem here. Because I truly claim that any individual, individual who is happy with his or her life and has challenges and has also a vision and an idea of how, how to um, work on his individual future and individual life wouldn't so much perhaps um, consume alcohol to a level where it's really a health problem. A word called prevention paradox. A colleague here, Victor, who spoke this morning, said that the Nordic model is about the social, social, social security. Way he said that, uh, when he said that, um, it's not about preventing failures. But it's without. It's it's about dealing with them, and I 100% fully agree. That's what it should be. But um, I dare to say that it's not exactly that. It's not that in Finland, and I dare to say that it's not that. <laughs> it's not the same in Sweden either. Talk about melon oil or what's this uh, beer which has only well whatever you can, which you can buy fairly freely, which doesn't have much alcohol in it. But anyway, the sweets are quite there as well. Now, tech regulation is, is something which is of interest to anyone as well. Um, I, well, I, I perhaps forgot to say in the beginning that I've been an MP only for six months because um, 
the Prime Minister of Finland, Jyrki Katainen, left um, in the summer for an EU job and, and I took his, his um, position in, in the Parliament, so I haven't been around that long, but what actually struck me at the beginning was that there was this, <coughs> there was a citizen's uh, incentive um, which involved the copyright law and there have also been two new legislation changes coming from the government in this um, autumn uh, which have involved changes to the existing copyright law. Now, one of the reasons that struck me in the new legislation which came from the government was that we need to regulate this new and we need to create new legis legislation because we have found out that we are lagging behind technology. And anyone in this room probably agrees that there is no such thing, there is no regulation, there's nothing which can ever do anything but lag behind technology. Because technology, as we all know, evolves constantly, evolves every second, every, you know, all the time. And if we try to keep it back, then we only hurt ourselves. Well, if we take the copyright law, I think it's extremely important to keep in mind that we need to reward all craftsmen. We need to reward individuals who put effort into something. People need to be rewarded in their lives for the work that they do, otherwise they lose all incentive to do anything. But is this the problem? What is the problem that we're solving? If you listen to these examples, I mean, For instance, now it's extremely difficult on quite many devices to make any personal copies of basically any sort of media. It's, it is actually prohibited in Finland to show YouTube clips in classrooms. I'm not kidding, it is. How, how do you, you know, teach your pupils any, any you know, new skills which, which um, involve new media or any basic you know, for instance, advertising skills or whatever. Can't do it. Or you need to break the law. You can't, well, what you, what, what you can do is you can save movies or, or other content on a hard drive which sits at home in your office, but you can't save that stuff onto, you know, a, into the cloud or, or, or onto a hard drive which sits with a service provider. How logic is that? Even though if, you know, you're the only one who has access to that, that media, that information, I don't think that's very logic at all. What it does, on the contrary, is, is that it pro prohibits <coughs> new companies and new ventures to actually come up with solutions which would make you know, the consumption of media, the, um, the uh, uh, you know, enjoyment of different activities easier and, and and uh, well, anyway, come up with the new innovations which would serve consumers better. It's it's prohibited to make parodies or sat satirical copies of of uh, art, for instance, a poem. If you uh, take a poem of a well-known Finnish poet and you change, you know, three words, then you're breaking the law. It's incredible. These examples are so many, but. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that regulation, as it is, uh, is perhaps a function of politicians not really knowing which problem to solve. And uh, I am a huge fan of diversity, having had a, quite a diverse background myself and uh, having had a lot of experience in quite many things in my life, but I think quite many politicians come from um, quite homogeneous backgrounds in the sense that they tend to think that, you know, to this and this and this problem which we've identified and which we've known for so many times, it's all about, you know, a little bit tweaking around in the current legislation and trying to find a solution on how to handle um, certain, certain <coughs> problematic things that they, have, that they have identified. Take Spotify. Um, what happened? 
they more or less in a well a few years back revolutionized the whole music industry. Obviously, you might disagree whether it's it's just to the into the right direction and whether you know all musicians and so forth or artists are rewarded in the right way. But at least without any regulation, it more or less wiped out all illegal copying of, of music content, which was quite popular at least two thousand well, in the two thousands, you know, Napster and all those. I, I truly believe that to any any problem we could find the right one, there is a solution. And we should let markets, which at the end of the day are individuals, free individuals, um, come up with their solutions. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting Reta Heiskanen, who spoke yesterday. And uh, oh. she's sitting here somewhere. <laughs> there. Uh, she told me about this venture, me happy that she's working on. I think it's a great example. Uh, there has been a plan on the politicians' table, on this government and the previous government's table, to add programming to children's uh, curricula in schools, but it hasn't really come anywhere. And now the proposal is that in, that in a few years' time, there will be okay, there will be some programming in the class, uh, mandatory to everyone, but only I don't know four times a year, a couple of hours, or whatever it was which is like nothing. I'm not saying that all children should become programmers. Obviously they don't. Not all children become novelists, but still we teach writing and we teach reading in school. I think teaching technology is definitely um, the way forward. In the future, there's nothing else than technology really that keeps changing, um, keeps changing the world and to the better, I would, I would say, uh, most of the time. But uh, since the politicians can't do it, I think it's fantastic that, again, there's a venture, there's a startup which you know, does it without asking any questions, without you know, <laughs> requiring perhaps four years of, of academic research, whether this or that, and that should be taught and what happens in those four years or even four months, if, 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 if it was that quick, is that it just lags behind the evolution of the world and the technology. Now, how to conclude? I think what politicians can do and what you can do is that you can demand from your local politicians that they find out more about what truly is moving in this world and whether and, and actually start questioning whether everything needs to be pre-regulated, whether we actually need to, you know, create a sandbox for people to operate in or whether people could actually make those sandboxes themselves. And also I, I truly invite you to question whether politicians and the government um, should have such a huge role in so many things that they currently do, especially in the Nordics, but the same applies here in England. So, I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the conference and all Nordic friends of mine, please enjoy the more liberal alcohol policy in this country. <laughs> I certainly will for the next two hours and then I will fly back home. Thanks so much.